Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make an animated text intro in Blender for the beginning of your videos. Now, I'm assuming that you have either no experience or very little experience in Blender, but you'd like to learn something from beginning to end so I can walk you through the, the tool and uh, you can become familiar with it. So let's get started. We'll open up Blender. We'll click on this splash screen to get rid of it. Now in Blender, it's a little different than other programs. You need to right click objects in order to select them. I'm going to show you how to create these different objects. It's a cube, a light source, and a camera. I'll show you how to create objects in the tool. So let's get rid of these items to start. And deleting is also something a little bit different rather than delete on your keyboard, at least in the Mac version. Uh, you press X on your keyboard and a pop-up menu comes up and you can either click or, or hit enter to delete the object. And get rid of these. In each of these window panes, you can actually select what you want in there. Below here, we have uh, the timeline, which I'll just show you. You could actually change that into a graph editor or something different. But uh, for now, we're going to leave it like this. So this is our 3D view here. Uh, on the left, we have a tool menu, which you can toggle on and off by pressing T on your keyboard, um, like that. And on the right-hand side, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later, but you can press N to uh, reveal a window there as well. There's some settings that we may need. And the mouse. Um, in this program, it assumes that you're using a three-button mouse. But if you're like me, I have a magic mouse on my Mac. Uh, I don't have a three-button option, but I can actually change a setting that will enable me to use all the functions in this program. Uh, go up to File, User Preferences. And under input, there is a setting under mouse that says emulate three button mouse. So I want to make sure that's clicked if you're in the same situation as me. If you have a three button mouse, then no worries. So now if I want to navigate around within this space, I would use my scroll wheel to slide inwards. I can press my option key and left click to uh, kind of float around in 3D space. If I want to kind of shift that whole thing up, I can hit Option and Shift and lift the whole thing up. Also, we have different views, so you can click on the view um, and say left view, right view, and so on. You can use your numpad on your keyboard if you have one. Uh, if you're like me, you don't, so you just toggle through the menu. Um, and depending what you're working with, uh, you're going to probably use all of these. And there are different render engines. I see people mostly using Cycles Render or the Blender Render. Um, what happens is there is different options in one and not the other and so on. So if you're ever following a tutorial and you find that you just absolutely don't have that, just pay attention to what uh, render engine they're working with. So let's get started with um, animating some text. I use Shift-C will bring my cursor I'm going to make sure I'm selected in that window. Shift-C, it will bring my cursor to the center of the screen and resize the window if necessary to fit everything in. Now we'll add some text. You can just press space on your keyboard. It'll bring up a menu. You can start typing uh, text, and you can add text that way. Or you can do it like I usually do it, which is Shift-A and click text. You have a text object there. We're in object mode, as you can see over here. You can either toggle this to edit mode, or as you get quicker with the shortcut keys, I just use tab, and that'll bring my cursor to the end of the text. I'll back it up, and we will type something here. Uh, Cinefreaks, how about that? And rather than hitting enter to complete your operation there, just hit tab again, it pulls it back into object mode. So I want to rotate this up. So you need to use commands on the keyboard. Press R and X to rotate on the X axis. And I'll type 90 and hit Enter. Now you can also do this just by hitting R and X and do it manually like this. But um, I want to make sure it's just easy to get to the 90 degrees by typing 90 and hitting Enter. If you ever want to undo anything or if you're halfway through an operation, just right click and it'll just reset. And speaking of resetting, um, you can also undo operations. It's not like typically you have undo up in a menu up here. 
Um, you can do it by uh, clicking on object and undo or, or just um, command Z as well. And this would probably be a good point to save our file. Give it a name. And save as Blender file. Let's do something with this text. Uh, over in this properties window over here, you'll notice a number of icons. Click on the F to get to the actual text. And we're going to extrude it. Um, if you can't really see what you're doing with your view, you know, kind of zoom in here a little bit. Now I want to extrude this out. So I'm actually going to do uh, 0 0.50. You can do it like this, or you can just 0 0.050 and give it a little beveled edge, 0 0.005 will do. Resolution, I'm just gonna put one on there. It kind of smooths out the edge there. Looking not too bad. Next, we'll give it a color. And to do that, we have to apply a material to it. This icon over here, this little circle is our materials area. Click on new. And let's just change the color, the diffuse color, to what, some kind of a freaky green. That'll do. And in order to see how this looks rendered so far, uh, you do need a camera and some kind of a light source. If you just had a camera, then everything would just be black because there's no light. So let's do that. Let's zoom out. Add a light source where I, wherever I put my cursor here. Same deal, Shift A. Lamp, I'll use a point. And move this object and grab the green and slide it back on the Y axis. Slide it over on the X. See if that's in front. It is in front, but we'll lift it up a little higher. Okay, so that'll do. And before we add a camera, I actually just want to um, center align my text to the center point over here. So I'm going to do Shift C to put my cursor in the center. I'll go back to the text object. I'm going to select the item there, right click to select it. Text object, scroll down, and align center. And the reason why I do that because I want to put my camera uh, at least to start so it's not lost in oblivion. We'll start it there. Uh, Shift A, add a camera. And now let's see what we're looking at here. Pull it out. Up. And actually, I'm going to show you a little trick. I like to work like this anyway. We'll add another window here. We're going to grab these little, this little corner here. And pull out another window. Uh, I don't need that but I will do my N to open this up because I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna switch this view to a camera view so I can see what my camera is doing. Now, if I hit lock, if you can see this properly here, lock to camera view, what it does, it'll, it'll stay on that view for me. And what's nice about that is I can control, you know, what my camera is doing. If you look on the left side, you can see that the camera is being manipulated. So it's kind of like manipulating it in real time, which is great when we get to the animation stage. So let's quickly look at the render so far. We'll open the camera over here, and we'll just hit render. For, there we go. So one thing you notice is the background is just this blah gray, which you typically not want to use, and that's controlled by your world horizon settings. So let's go change that. Um, but before we do that, let's close this window. Just click to select in that window and hit escape. And over here in the properties window, this is the world. And this is a horizon color. So let's just drop that right down to a nice black. And re-render that. Render, render. Looks a little better. Select escape. And let's animate. So, 
down here in our timeline window. We'll start right at the beginning and let's figure out in real time with our camera view uh, where we want to put our camera. So I'm just going to zoom it way out and insert a keyframe. Uh, you can just press I on your keyboard, but I'll show you the menu way of doing it. Object, animation, insert keyframe. And we want visual location rotation scale. So when we're on this frame, this is where the camera should be. If your video is approximately 24 frames per second, you can just get somewhere in that vicinity if you figure that's a second worth of animation. So in the first second, what I want it to do is to maybe zoom in and or rotate it a little bit. That'll do. So let's say that's where we want the second keyframe. Actually from there, let's have it sit there for a second. So we'll add another keyframe. And then we'll zoom straight through the letters. So let's do that now. And it kind of stalls me there so I can grab the camera this way. Uh, I want my path to be kind of between the letters here. There we go. Insert that keyframe. Let's see what we're looking at. That's it. So we're ready to render. And rather than rendering to the 250th frame here, Let's just change that. Uh, we're probably good at about uh, 75 frames. I normally render out as a PNG image sequence, uh, which is a bunch of still images um, for each frame. And then I import that into Final Cut Pro. You could use Sony Vegas, anything that will accept a sequence of images. And then you can export that as a video file. In this case, a very short animation, we can get away with just going directly to an MPEG or on a PC, probably AVI RAW. I'm just going to do H264 here. And you press the animation button and that will render out your movie. So let's do that. Okay, that's done. And this output actually tells you where that file is going to be. Um, I probably should have uh, redirected it somewhere, but that's fine. Let's just go to that folder. Um, go to here. And this is the file. Let's take a quick look at that. And there you have it. Hope you learned something. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the video.